All right, so on we go with MP2. And today's lesson focuses on probably one of the most important parts of the MP, um, which is this. And, and the reason for this is because of how common this is and also because of how powerful it is. So this is this client server aspect of the app that you're working on. Now, I'll admit, this is, there's elements of this that are weird uh, in terms of how we set it up. Because normally, the code that we're about to look at, the server code, would not run in the app. It would run somewhere else. It would run in a cloud somewhere or a data center somewhere. Um, but because of how we've configured this, I wanted to give you a chance to do what's called full stack app development. You may have seen like this and you might know what, is, what does it mean, right? Well, the two parts of the stack are the client and the server, basically. And so you're getting to modify both. And hopefully that exposes you a little bit more of the communication patterns between them. These communication patterns underlie the modern world of computing, pretty much from everything from browser side stuff to websites to web apps to smartphone apps. You know, if, if you look at how different apps are communicating over the internet, how they're retrieving data, how does Facebook figure out what data to show you in the, in the news feed? How does it transmit that data to you, right? How do you retrieve the data to populate your Instagram feed or whatever it is, right? Or to send chat, mess to, to send chat messages using an app on your phone or on, on, in your browser, right? This is all done using the same fundamental client-server communication approach and the same protocol frequently that we're about to talk about today um, and that you're going to see in action in your app. Like we've done before, though, you know, don't get too freaked out here because we have a lot of really good starter code for you to base things off. Of. Okay, so the next, so first of all, if you haven't completed the first part of, of MP2, please go ahead and do that first. Um, I, you know, I've, I've finished the load preferences method and it's tested and working. If it's not, if that doesn't work, you're not going to make a lot of progress here, right? So that really needs to be step one. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on how do we get that data to your app? So the server now has this JSON string that it's loaded the preferences into. And now what we, or it has a method that will do that. So now we need to figure out how do we transmit that data to the client, to the app, so that the app can use it to improve the UI, right? We want to be able to show recommended restaurants to users. How do we do that? So we have to get the data from the server to the client. Um, and the way this is done, again, is idiomatic. This is the same way that it would be done for any piece of data uh, that be being transmitted as part of a full stack web application. Um, and what's nice about this is that we're already doing this for another piece of data. And that piece of data is the information about the restaurants themselves. So let's review some of the existing code in the server because this is what you'll need to understand and modify so that you can finish this next test case, right? So there's two test cases that are part of this lesson, 10 points for the server side one, and then we'll have a separate video talking about the client side component. Okay, um, so let's talk about where the restaurant data comes from. So the H, what we're using to exchange data here is something called the HTTP protocol. It's called the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And this is probably by one of the most commonly used protocols on the internet to exchange information between a client and a server. What's a server? A server is a computer that has information, right? That serves up information to clients. That server could be a web server that is uh, producing web pages, right? So when you go to a website, your browser makes an HTTP request using the same protocol to the server for a particular page, which the server sends back and then is rendered in your browser. That's how the World Wide Web works. What we're building here is what's called a, a, sometimes an API server. So we're not serving web pages. We're not sending HTML. What we're sending is data, JSON. And a lot of apps work this way. So for example, you know, I don't work at Facebook uh, and I don't know why I keep using Facebook as an example. Maybe it's like the only app I know about. Uh, I guess Reddit probably works similarly, but whatever. Um, so you know, these apps, what they do when they need data is they make a request and the request is, I suspect, using the same protocol. But what they get back is not a web page, it's data, right? And in this case, what we're gonna send back is JSON. Now we're already doing this with the restaurant. So there's a restaurants.csv file. We have a, a method that we use to parse that and uh, load it and convert it to JSON. And then we sent that JSON to the client. How does that work? 
So the the HTTP server that we provided, the small little server, and, and again, it's small uh, and it's simple, but the basic principles are here. This builds on top of an existing framework. And the the where every uh, request where the request handling starts is in this method called dispatch. You'll see that dispatch receives a request. And this is another case of a callback, actually, because we don't know when the client's going to ask for something. So what the framework does is it handles a lot of the low-level details for us. But when it receives a request from a client, it calls this dispatch method. It passes us information about the request. And it says, what do I do now? And it's our job to produce a response. Uh, figure out what should, so the client asks for something, what should I send back? You might also wonder what a protocol is, right? Well, protocol in some ways is sort of similar to an interface, except there are sort of actions involved, right? There can be a series of steps. So I might make a request and then the server might, the, the client might make a request and the server might do something and the client might do something else. So sometimes in a protocol, there's several different steps. Not a bad analogy are diplomatic protocols, right? When you know the president goes to another country, there's a whole series of steps that the country takes to welcome them, and there's these formal exchanges that are very scripted and ritualistic. Um, and in, in some ways, that's what a protocol is. It's a series of steps that both parties agree to follow so that something can happen, in this case, so that the client can retrieve information that it needs from the server. Um, okay. So when the server receives a request, it calls this dispatch method, and this is the dispatch method, and this is where we put our code. You can read through this and, and, and kind of look at what's going on, but the, the, the main uh, interesting uh, component here is happening in this piece of code. This is sometimes known as a dispatch tree or a routing tree, because the piece of that when the client makes a request, it provides us with some information that we use to determine how to handle the request. And one of the most important pieces of information in the HTTP protocol is what's called the path. So when you're on a website and you go to different pages, every one of those pages represents a different request to the server. And the server provides different data, which is why the page looks different. Um, when you build an HTTP API server like we're doing, you do something similar. So in this case, what we've done is we've said, when the re client requests the path slash restaurants, we return all the restaurants we know about as JSON. And that's what happens right here. So this is a when statement. You'll see when the path is restaurants and when the method is get, I'll talk about that in a minute, I return the result of calling get restaurants. Now, what is this method? So HTTP also includes different methods that the client can use. Get is by far the most common and it does what it sounds like. It gets stuff. It's the protocol that's, or it's the, uh, action that's used uh, by the HTTP protocol to retrieve information. Most of the time when you're browsing, like on your phone, most of what your phone is doing is issuing GET requests to the server. There is a way for your client to send data to the server too, and that's using a different request called a POST. Like when you purchase something, you might need to send your credit card information and information about what you want to buy to the server. That uses a different protocol. We probably aren't going to use, sorry, a different uh, action, a different uh, protocol type, a different method. Why am I, a different method, right? So rather than a get, that's a post. We probably aren't going to use post as part of this app, but it's good to know it's out there, okay? So when I get a request for restaurants, where the path is restaurants and the method is get, what I do is I return the result of calling get restaurants. What does get restaurants do? So this is responsible for formulating a response. And we're using this mock response class. Uh, what do we do here? So the first thing we do is we set a code on the response that indicates to the client that it worked, right? The next thing we do is we set the body of the response. So what's really being thrown around on the internet are strings on some level, right? A lot of times what's being exchanged between a client and a server is a string. In this case, the string is JSON, which the client's then going to deserialize, and we'll look at that next. But I set the body to be this restaurant's JSON string that I parsed, I loaded when the server started up. And then I set a header field. So headers are, are, are another part of the HTTP protocol that essentially allow me to sort of add arbitrary additional information to a response or to a request. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm setting a content type header 
And this provides the client with information about what's in the body of the response. In this case, the body of the response contains JSON. And so I tell it that, and I also tell it something about the character set that's being used, like what, you know, what encoding is being used to uh, encode the characters, right? Which is important for handling special characters and things like this. Anyway, okay, so that's an overview of what's happening. Now, what do you need to do in order to pass this test case? So you already wrote load preferences. If you're here, you have a working load preferences. That's step one, you're gonna need that, right? That's why we wrote it. If you look at the test case, what are we doing? We're making a request for a preferences route. Now, you might wonder like, where's the slash here, right? But if I go to the declaration of uh, server URL, you'll see that it already ends with the slash. So that's why there's no slash here. But I'm, I'm requesting the preferences route. And what I expect to get back is the JSON that you parsed out of preferences.csv. So you can mimic a lot of the code in here, right? To, to respond to the request. And you're also going to have to look at the code down here and understand how to add a new route. If you can do those things, you can pass this test, right? And this is a case where, you know, we've given you some existing code and the code exposes a particular programming pattern and we want you to follow that pattern and, and add some new code that does something very similar to the code that's already there, right? Um, and so, you know, again, you can, you can cut and paste a lot of this, change some names, change some variable names, change a few strings, and you'll be able to make forward progress here. Um, but you know, this idea of, you know, responding to a request from data, like I said, like this underlies your modern experience of computing. You know, try, if you dare, on your phone, shut off your network and see how long you can go before you start to go nuts. Like our experience of the world around us through computers today is so predicated on connectivity. And that connectivity is built on top of the internet, which supports a large variety of protocols, but some of them like HTTP have become incredibly common and used for all sorts of different things. And so we're giving you a little bit of a, a picture, an insight into that world of computing. Because by building things like this, you really can build this incredible range of applications. We've been telling you that all semester. But if you know some basic programming and how to move data back and forth between a client and a server, that dramatically expands the range of things that you can create and the types of problems that you can solve.